Hey class, today we're learning about direct variation. Okay, direct variation is kind of like proportions. Um, in a direct variation, the function is in the form y equals k, which is a constant, times x, and k can't be zero. That's called a direct variation. The constant of a variation, um, k, is the coefficient of x, so it's the number we're multiplying by x. Um, the variables y and x are said to vary directly with one another. So those words, direct variation, um, are going to come into play, especially when we do some word problems. Let's look at the first example here. So you want to you wanna ask yourself, is this equation um, a direct variation? Okay, if it is, find its constant, the constant of its variation. So we have 2x minus 3y equals 1. So you want to rearrange your equation so it's in y equals format so that we can see if, if it's in the form y equals k times x. So we're going to start by subtracting um, 1 from each side or excuse me, subtracting 2x from each side, and then we divide each side by negative 3, and that's going to leave us with y equals 2 thirds x plus 1 third. In this case, the equation should have the form y equals k times x. It is not a direct variation because we can't find that constant there. If you look at the second equation, we have 2x minus 3y equals 0. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides, okay? And then we're going to divide both sides by the negative 3, okay, Got some, forgot the negative sign there, and we end up with y equals 2 thirds x. That is in the form y equals k times x, which is a constant times um, the x, and so we have the constant of the variation here, which is the k of 2 thirds. So this, in, in this case, it is a direct variation. Let's look at the next example. We have example two. So now we're told that we have a direct variation. And here's one point of this direct variation. Hmm. Well, notice here we're given a point. And remember, the negative three is considered an x value and the two is a y value. So knowing that we have a direct variation, we can use this standard setup here of y equals k times x. We plug in the negative 3 for x and the 2 for the y, and we compute for the k value. So we rearrange it, and we get the k value to be negative 2 thirds. Okay? So we get this k value to be negative 2 thirds, and then we can rewrite a direct variation equation by substituting in for k the negative two-thirds in um, next to our x, and we have y equals negative two-thirds x. So there is your direct variation. Notice we don't have any plus or minus here. It's a little different than um, linear relationships. All right, moving on to example three. Here's a real-world situation. So a weight of an object exerts on a scale directly varies with the mass. Okay, weight and mass. And hopefully in science class you've talked about the difference between weight and mass. So if a bowling ball has a mass of 6 kilograms and the scale reads 59, which is going to be its weight, you want to write an equation for the relationship between the weight and mass. And so um, the weight varies directly with the mass, and we're told this information. So x is going to be 6 and y is going to be 59. And remember, x is the mass of an object and y is the weight of an object. So we plug in 59 for y and 6 for the x, and we can solve for k of being 59, 6. So now we have an equation on how the weight of an object and its mass vary directly, which is y equals 59, 6. Um, you could technically convert that, but I like fractions, so I'm going to leave it. All right, let's look at example four. Okay, here we have a table of values, and we're asked if it varies directly or not. So I'm going to show you how you can figure it out. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to take the y over the x. Remember, with our standard equation here of y equals, okay, where's my magic pen? I don't want my magic pen. Um, with the standard um, equation in a direct variation, y equals k times x. Well, in order to solve for k, okay, in order to solve for k, we divide both sides by y, right? And so we're left with 
k is equal to y over, that's a y, over the x. So what we can do now is we can take the y, which is 2, and divide it by x, which is negative 1, and we get negative 2. Do the same thing here. We take 2 over 1, and we get 2, and then we take negative 4 over 2, and we get negative 2. If this were a direct variation, all of these numbers would be the same number. That would be the constant. Um, that's a cool way to look at it, but we don't have a direct variation here, so our constant isn't the same. Okay, so the ratio of y to x is different for each pair of data, so um, the y doesn't vary directly with x in this situation. Let's look at another example of direct variation here. Here's a physics problem. Um, you have a windlass that requires 75.75 um, .75 pounds of force to lift an object that weighs 48 pounds. So how much force would be needed to lift a 210 pound object? And so what we can do here is um, relate the force um, of 0.75 pounds will lift 48, and then we have the force of um, n pounds, which we don't know how much force we're going to need to lift 210 pounds um, of weight. So we can let n be the number of the amount of force needed to lift the 210 pounds. And what we can do here is we can write a proportion in which our force 1 over force 2 equals force 2 over weight 2 here, okay? And this would be the same, remember, force over weight here will be the same as trying to figure out your constant, which is what you're going to do when you divide these two numbers, is you're going to find that k value. And then you're going to figure out what the y value, or in this case the x value, is going to be needed to lift that 210 pounds. So what we can do now is we can, um, we can put in our 0.75 over the 48, which is the weight, and then we're going to set that equal to n over the 210. Now, a couple of ways to do this is we could, we could um, just get that constant value here. Let me just clear this out from our last class. Um, we're going to take the um, 0.75, and we're going to divide it by the 48, okay? And we get, um, we get 0.015625. So that's, um, that would be your k value here in this situation if you wanted to do it that way, or you could solve it using the proportion method. Um, in this case, because that's such a large decimal, I'm going to use the proportion method to solve because it'll be a little bit more accurate. And if I know some of you right now, you're thinking, okay, 0 0.051, uh, 0 0.015625, you're going to tell me it's 0 0.015 and you're done, right? Um, and that 625 really has a lot of value, so we want to make sure that we're not forgetting about the value of that. So here we're going to, let me hide the third view here a little bit so I can have some more space, but we're going to multiply the 0 0.75 times the 210. So 0 0.75, we're going to multiply that times the 210. Give me a 2, give me a 10, okay, um, and that gives me 157.5. So that gives me 150, come on, give me a pen now. <laughs> 157.5 is going to equal 48N, okay, and now I can divide both sides by 48. Divide both sides by 48 and come back to my handy dandy calculator and take 157.5 and divide it by 48 and I get 3.2815 and we're going to say n, pen please, n is 3.2, uh, I forgot the number, 3.2888825, okay, and that's in pounds as well. Good luck with the notes. Um, I will see you in class tomorrow. Uh, just to summarize quickly, if the equation is in the form y equals k times x, then it's a direct variation. If y over x equals the same value in the table, then you know you have a direct variation. Um, k is the constant in a direct variation. Some cool little pieces of information you could write in um, on your flashcards if you wanted to. Nice job, class.